Hey Russians, we are going to try to bring back a an MPU from the dead. This is uh, out of one of my Bally Kiss machines. There's a whole quagmire of wires going on here. I just have it hooked up to my little power supply. There's a computer power supply. To boot these things, you need uh, 5 volt, 12 volt, and ground. So yellow, uh, black and red. Yellow is 12 volt, black is ground, red is 5 volt. Uh, the 12 volt goes to the number 2 test point, the red or 5 volt goes to the test point 5, and ground goes to test point 4. So what happens when you turn this on, uh, it's not going to work because the, you know, this should, I'm just turning it on, bang, this thing's not flashing, so it's the solid green light of death, as I will call it. So we got to figure out why it's not working. Now, if you do some reading online, you might hear of the damage that happens because of batteries with alkaline uh, which is actually uh, a base which is not an acid but anyway uh, and it could re re uh, affect what's called the research section reset section which lives all around here right where the battery corrodes and does all its nastiness now in this case i can eliminate that because the reset actually works so what you got to do is just put a multimeter Set it on DC, uh, DC volts, okay? And then you're going to turn it on and off, and you're going to put the uh, black goes to ground, and the positive red goes to the, uh, this is actually the top pin of the uh, U, which chip is that again? U10? Yeah, it's the U10 chip, and it's spot number 38. Okay, you can just see it resting there. Now, the reason I have it set up like this is so I can show you how it's going to work on camera. So if I turn the power off, watch what happens with my multimeter, okay? It's basically at nothing. The second I turn on the power, this should jump up to 5 volts. Uh, watch. Okay, see how it went from off? Now I'm going to turn it on. Bang, bang, on. 5 volts. So that tells us that the reset section is working. Okay, so that there's nothing going on here, which is a good thing because otherwise you got to start replacing replacing all these components, which takes a lot of time and this one is relatively clean. So to that end, what could be our problem? Well, I can tell you, I can get rid of this now. That all these sockets have been replaced except for these two. So I'm suspecting there's some uh something going on with the the sockets that these chips get fed into. So let me pop off the chips and I'll actually show you how to take the uh, the socket off as well. Okay, I'm gonna show you how I left off computer chip. Just use a flat screwdriver and under the chip and just gently pry it out, but you wanna pry it up, okay? And the same with this one here. You guys can see that. Just wiggle your way. Actually, let's do it from this side. Just want to get it from underneath the base. And right through. And that's it. Perfect. Again, lift it. Make sure you lift it straight up. You don't bend any of the legs. Okay, now, these sockets, these ones are not too bad, uh, but they do have, uh, they only catch the, the chip by one leg. All right, so let's pull this one, these, so it's these two that are suspect. Let me get some light on the situation here. Let's pull off the first one. So, same deal. With these, you can just stick your screwdriver underneath and lift. I gotta get two hands, hold on. Okay. I think I might have screwed it up, but that's okay. So off it comes. Let's have a look at this. Oh, I can see it. If you guys can see it or not but 
seventh leg has a bit of green going on. Yeah. Right there. See, that's a bit discolored from the rest. That's a better way. It's a little gray. It shows up gray, but it's actually... Well, isn't that convenient, eh? Okay, so what we gotta do is change. Yeah, there you can see a little better. Yeah, again, guys, I'm using an iPhone. Right there, that one there. It's, uh, it's green. Which, again, it's living in the corrosion area. And these ones were changed for a reason, but that's... Well, listen, I'm not saying that's the problem, but where there's smoke, there's fire, right? So let's take that out, put a new chip in there, and go from there. And how we're going to take it out is we're going to use our world-famous Hako desoldering gun. This thing is champ. So I'm basically going to suck out all the solder, pull out those pins, pop in a new one, and I'll bring you back. Hold this when you do it, hold it this way. Don't make the tool do more work up by sucking up. one bank done. I think you can see that. See through the holes there? And I have the other side here. I think you can see. Okay. Sure we'll see the holes right through. Okay. Now let me find a chip or a socket, I should say. Let's put you on hold for a bit. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So here's what we're doing. We're going to. So we sucked out the chip. We're gonna clean this uh, fiberglass pen. Both sides. Okay, now, if you guys want to really, I want to say, guarantee yourself some success, but if you want to guarantee, well, for this chip anyway, that you've got a good. Um, secure bond. Best practice is to go through the exercise. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to be really, really anal here and make sure that there aren't any breaks in any in this circuit. Okay, so I'm going to show you what you got to do. You're going to take your multimeter. You're going to put it on 
uh, continuity. So when the two things touch, you get that note. And what we're gonna do is check each trace to confirm there aren't any breaks. Okay, now here's what I'm doing basically. I'm just touching the trace from the pad to the next possible via point. Via point is just uh, like a hole in the board that goes on the other side to make sure there aren't any breaks. So obviously this is exaggerated. In this case, if this was the case, it wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't hear that buzz because there is a break right here. And this has happened to me before where the, but the board's not working. You just put in a new, you know, new socket and all of a sudden it's not working because what happens is if this line is broken right here, for example, which is, you know, here, you're not, you don't get a perfect trace. Your board will not work. One little break and this whole board won't work, believe it or not. Uh, this one here would be working because there's no breaks. And the same as this one here. So go through the exercise of checking each line front and back to make sure you're not going to be in a position where you do have a break and it's going to cause you grief. So let me just show you this one, for example. Make sure we're working. So I'm going to go from here to the via point so it works. I'll go from here to the via point. Now, now notice I'm being strategic where I'm putting the multimeter because if this thing is broken in half, then it's the same thing. You won't be you won't be uh, all the way through, right? Then we're going to go from here. I'll follow this trace, and we're going to go from here. Let's go from here. And follow these traces all the way through. It does get a bit numbing. Okay, so this is what, these ones are all done. And these ones don't branch off to anything. But with these ones, okay, I'm going to touch it from here. I'm going to flip it over. Okay, see what I'm doing? I'm on the, the through hole on the other side underneath and going like that. And then, and then we're going to go through each one on the top just to confirm that we don't have a break. Okay, then when we put the chip in, we're going to do the same thing. So once I get, sorry, not the chip, the socket. Once the socket goes in and it's soldered in, same thing, except this time I will do it from here. I will go from here and buzz it out. Okay? Yes, that uh, takes a while, but that's the way you're almost guaranteed to get, well, to eliminate that the socket is, is the issue and go from there. Okay? So I'm going to do that and I'll bring you back. So here is a rosin, rosin flux pen. What we're going to do is we're going to Give it some paste on both sides of the board. This will help. Not, a, not only it's going to like help the solder stick, but it's going to help it flow because we want the solder to go through. And we want it to completely engulf the socket. So here's our socket. Okay, I ended up taking a longer socket and just cut the ends off. Make sure we got enough holes. in. That's perfect. Now what I do is I take the thing that the socket came with to hold it to make sure the pins are up. Watch they are. Now let me show you how I how I solder. Plug us in here. All right, now I'm gonna use, this is the good solder. I've showed this to you before. Okay, this is what I'm using. I like this stuff because it says it's made in Canada. So it's gotta be, you know it's gotta be good stuff, it's made in Canada, right? 
So, <laughs> okay. Now, wait till this thing heats up. Soldering gun. And I've got that piece of styrofoam. Uh, whatever is it, a styrofoam? Yeah, sure, let's go with that. I got it underneath, so let me just zoom in. Like that. to go yeah okay as i solder what i do is i make sure that the solder goes in and i kind of tease it guys let this thing heat up a little bit more I'm trying to do this through the camera lens and it's not uh it's not that easy there we go okay as I push this thing back and forth to force the solder to go through and to the other side. And never sit on the same side too long because you risk the pad separating if you got too much heat on. So I'm just going to crisscross. Now I'm pushing it back and forth to move the little leg so that we can get some more juice in there. I don't know if you can see it, but it looks like it's bubbling. Because that's just the solder percolating down. Okay. All right, now we're gonna check to make sure we didn't short any of these pins out, meaning we didn't put solder that covered both pins. Now, some of them you actually have to do that. But in these ones we didn't. No way we're gonna do it. We're gonna take out our fancy multimeter again. We're just gonna go to test each pin side by side. See if they're shorted, they're gonna react. But so far so good. This side's good. Okay, nothing reactive. All right, now I'm gonna check these to make sure we got them right through. The way I'm checking these, let's see if I can zoom in a bit here. We did a really good job in making sure that the solder ended up going right through the pad. Where is it? There it is. So you can see how it went through, and it's leaving a trace there. So I know if it's going here and I can touch the trace, it's good. Otherwise, I'm going to go from here and follow it to here, just to confirm that we have a 100% connection. If you really want to go crazy, you could go from the that to the next section on the chip. Okay, and I'll bring you back. You guys, let's see. Uh, See what's gonna happen here. Let's 
That's excess. Okay. Other good practice is to clean the area with alcohol. There you have it. Change that. And rock and roll all night and party every day. Hope this was uh, of some use to you. Rush fan over and out.